Elliot Spitzer was on Morning Joe, and he was being interviewed by Mark Halperin, and man, did Halperin go after him. I have a lot to say about this clip. Now, as you're listening, ask yourself if you think this line of questioning is legitimate or not. Let's listen. In this position, will you ever lie to the public once elected? No. No. Never. No. So, Meek asked you in the beginning, how people can be confident that there won't be a repeat of the behavior before, and you said you reflected. Just speak a little bit more about that. What does that mean? That what, what is what you've done in the last five years? How does that convince people and oh. reassure people that it won't happen again? I've tried to, to do things that matter in a, in a small and quiet way. Now that that doesn't persuade people about recurrence, but I've also thought deeply and, and recognized that I would need to answer these questions. And, and I've said, look at the pain I've caused. To but if, if you win, you will not really have paid, you've paid some price, obviously, but you will not have had your public career ended. So again, okay. wouldn't, wouldn't that, to some extent, reinforce the notion that you could do what you wanted to do? No, I'm not quite sure. I mean, and, and I think that there has been a substantial price to be paid, and I'll let others you know, determine big, small, adequate or inadequate, but resigning the governorship and then dealing with the aftermath of that and dealing with everything that has flown from it. That was a pretty significant Are there answer. any things people in elective office, a high office like Governor of New York could do that involve law breaking a line to the public that you would consider as a voter disqualifying where nothing's disqualifying yeah. if a person comes back and says, look what I've done for the last five years, look at my great ideas. Or are there things that are sure, disqualifying? Sure, sure, like sure, what? sure there are. I mean, I, I think there's... What would be disqualifying? I, I think there is a difference between private and public lives, and I'm not the one to begin to articulate this distinction at this point, because I'm, I'm in a, a uniquely bad position to try to articulate it, but I think there is a divide there that is something we do want to think about at a certain point in time. But lying as the governor of New York well, it is not disqualified. It depends about what. I, I think you, we all know that politicians dissemble all the time about negotiations what, on substantive issues and probably on personal issues as well. And so it is a question of where, when, how, and on what issue. I think there's slightly greater subtlety to this in terms of the art of both governance and how you then determine whether what people have done is disqualified. So, well, one, one more. So is it an elected official, governor of New York, controller of New York, lying about his or her personal life when asked about it in, in a public capacity, that's fine? No, I didn't say it's fine. But you asked if it was disqualifying. And I think that, again, I th think we're going down here a path here where it requires more time to really parse out what that boundary is between the private and the public. Now, I'll give you something that's disqualifying. If people lie about their taxes, not having paid their taxes and all the rest, then I think that is disqualifying. But you, but you lied about illegal activity. Well, I, I, I lied about personal sexual activity, yes. And, and I did that. I'm not trying to diminish it. You weren't lying about an affair, a consensual affair. You were lying about illegal uh, activity. Okay, that's correct. So... You, you're, but you're saying that lying about illegal activity to you is not this, this is I will let the public make that, de that determination. I love how surprised Mark Halperin is that politicians lie. He's like, oh, Elliot, you told us a lie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all politicians lie. Now, look, I'm not here to make excuses for Elliot Spitzer, but all they did was talk about his sex life. That's it. The entire thing was his sex life. Now, I want to answer one of the questions that Halpern asked there. He said, is there any lie that would make it so somebody can't get elected? Yeah, there actually are some lies. You know what the worst lie is to me? When a politician says to the American people or to their constituents, hey, I'm looking out for you. I care about the middle class. I care about the poor. I care about all of you. And then they turn around and they only legislate in favor of the people who funded their campaigns. So the rich and the corporations and the well-to-do. And they completely leave behind their constituents and the American people. That is worse than any lie Elliot Spitzer ever told, right? And I'm all in favor of tough interviews, but they have to be fair. Now, that wasn't fair. That was a hack job. Do you remember them doing this with Newt Gingrich, for example? Remember Newt Gingrich cheated on his wife when she had cancer on her deathbed, and he left her. Did he have to go on Morning Joe and talk to Mark Halperin, and uh, Mark Halperin grilled him with these questions? Do you remember them doing this to Mark Sanford? 
who uh, used public dollars to take his plane to visit his Argentinian mistress to bang her in the middle of his term when nobody knew where he went. Did they talk to him about that? No. Did they talk to David Vitter? Remember David Vitter? He got caught with prostitutes. He never even stepped down. And he pulled a shack. He told them, yeah, tell me how my ass tastes. I'm going to run and I'm going to win. And he did it. Never had to apologize. Never had to go on Morning Joe and do a mea culpa. Scott Desjardins, Scott Desjardins just won re-election. Here's a guy who voted pro-life consistently, voted for the drug war consistently. He was caught smoking weed. He was caught uh, giving prescriptions to his mistresses just so they could get high. He had his wife get an abortion and also had one of his mistresses get an abortion as well. The biggest hypocrite in the world, a tremendous number of scandals, way worse than Spitzer. He didn't have to come on Morning Joe and answer any of these questions. Now, they didn't go after them because the Republicans, and those are all Republicans who got a pass, but Spitzer doesn't get a pass. He's a Democrat. The Republicans get a pass because they're such goofballs and they fuck up so often that if the media reported honestly on the Republicans, it would appear as if the media has a bias. Now, it wouldn't be a bias because those things are facts, but it would appear like it's a bias because they'd be piling on. But since the Democrats aren't as ridiculous as often, Whenever there's the opportunity to go after a Democrat like Spitzer for a sex scandal, they pounce. They pounce and they hammer it home. And then they look to Fox News and the right wingers and they go, see, we don't have a, a liberal bias. We just went after uh, Elliot Spitzer unfairly. But look, there's another more important reason that uh, they did what they did in this interview. They're trying to minimize and discredit Elliot Spitzer. Now, there were no policy questions there, no questions about, hey, you know, what substantive direction uh, would you go as comptroller? Uh, how would you look out for the American people, so on and so forth? Or how would you look out for the people in New York? Nope, none of it. It was all salacious, celebrity level gossip nonsense. Why? Because Wall Street is deathly afraid of him. The establishment is deathly afraid of him. And they'll stop at nothing. They'll crank up the prop propaganda machine as high as it goes to try to get Elliot Spitzer down and out. Now expect a lot more hack job interviews coming in the future.